There's nothing that's more special than a rhino iguana. I mean, they are such good pets. They're amazing animals. Now, of course, it's hard for most people to keep them because they get really big. But if you have the space and you want an animal that's going to interact with you and be absolutely amazing, I tell you what, Diddy and Dixie, Bella, even Tiana, even though she's not a rhino, she's a cyclera. Unbelievable animals, relatively easy to keep. They're vegetarian, so they're easy to feed. They take a little time when it comes to cleaning, but overall, amazing animals, and I love these guys so much. They're such a good girl. And you know, I want to tell you guys something really exciting today. How cute are salt and pepper? I remember when they were little tiny babies, and that's kind of the one of the things I want to tell you about is that, of course, we've been talking about them getting new homes, right? And that home would, of course, be the new aquarium. Well, you guys know that it has been a tumultuous ride getting to the point where we are now. Different it's things like that. If you remember, it actually started right here in this building. Sunfire, absolutely incredible. Another animal that's getting big that's going to need a bigger enclosure. And it actually has one on the way. So the whole idea of the aquarium started in this building, right? We're going to actually expand frontwards and then we're going to go up and we're going to build the aquarium upstairs. Well, we actually even went through the design work on it, the whole shot. We had the prints drawn, we had it quoted. The biggest issue that we had was parking was really a problem, right? We're like, how are we going to fit, you know, hundreds of thousands of people potentially a year when we only have like 60 or 70 car spots? It's going to really be a problem. So ultimately, that was the one thing that we didn't know how we were going to conquer. And then, of course, there was that one beautiful Saturday afternoon when I looked across the street and I saw the people that were across the street put up a sign that said, we're moving. And then, of course, immediately I was like, I need to get that building. Oh my God, you scared me. And I know you guys have already seen the building. I mean, yes, that building used to be a thrift store before that was a grocery store. And it was just one of those things I was like, that's perfect because not only is it big, it's actually even bigger than if we would have went here up on top at the Reptarium. But also, look at all the parking. We got all the parking here. And then in the back, there's parking as well. So there's about 150 cars that we can actually park in that parking lot, which is something that we're going to need when we have those days that we might have two or 3,000 people cycling through. So we need lots of parking, right? You know what happened next. First, we actually secured the building. Secondly, we started working on the design. And literally, uh, this paper here was the first drawing that I actually made of the building itself. You know, just starting to say like where I wanted things to go, you know, where the reptiles were going to go, where the fish were going to go. Now, I'll be honest with you, this rendition of the Reptarium Aquarium is uh, nothing like as it turned out, to be honest with you. We went through probably five different types of designs of how we wanted the flow. And we finally have, over the last you know few months, gotten to the point where we have the incomplete layout of the building itself. So our architects and engineers are now working on what they call MEPs, which is Mechanical, Electrical, and Plumbing. And that's for everything in the building. And we're also working on you know getting all the aging priced out. We've already bought a bunch of the tanks. We've actually hired contractors to build the tanks. But of course, we ran into a snag. You guys know what happened, right? About two months ago, we had to put everything on hold because, of course, I had a little bit of a problem. So the last two months, we've been kind of moving forward when it comes to design. When it comes to spending money, we basically stopped the project because, of course, we ran into the issue with my diagnosis and getting a loan from the bank wasn't going to really happen. So we had to figure out how we're going to raise the money. How can we actually finish this project? I've already told you guys that I have a set amount of money set aside, but it's going to cost a lot more than that. So we knew like, oh my gosh, you know, we don't know. So we've been raising money. You guys know there's a GoFundMe. I'll put a link in the description. It's always there. You guys have raised $250. $15,000 for me on that. I've had a bunch of other people that have pitched in. We're at about, you know, 400, 450,000. We have a couple other people that might pitch in bigger numbers, which is really going to be super helpful. So up until now, we've just basically been in this holding pattern. Do we do this? Do we not do this? If we don't do it, what are we going to do with the building and all this other stuff? There's a lot of hardships, right? But I've been kind of keeping this kind of faith like, hey, let's go ahead. Let's move forward because this is absolutely incredible. Speaking of fundraising, there's actually something really cool a friend of mine named Adney Gaps is doing. If you guys want to come to the Reptarium, he's actually running a contest right now raffle i think it's like 20 bucks per raffle ticket and he's gonna pick two people he's gonna fly them in gonna pay for the hotel you're gonna get a private tour here at the reptarium and you're gonna have open hours during the reptarium for free that's right so you can actually for 20 bucks enter in and you may win and he's just taking all those proceeds minus what it costs to actually get people out and he's donating it to us for the aquarium so again i'm going to put a link in the description to andy's channel go watch his video you can see how he actually is doing things and you can enter and maybe you can fly here to the Reptarium and meet all our incredible animals here. And again, it helps the cause. It helps us raise money because definitely that is a big thing. I know, sweetheart, what are you doing? She is such an inquisitive. I, you know, anacondas, they're so bizarre. I mean, look at how inquisitive they are. They're just like, what's going on? Again, most snakes crawl away from you. These snakes crawl towards Absolutely you. Absolutely incredible. Whether it's Ivy, Ariana, Verde. I mean, they're all just such amazing animals. I love them to death. <laughs> Oh, 
every time I come in here, I still really see the aquarium in Reptarium. I don't see an empty building that has nothing going on. I see tanks and exhibits. I have it all in my head, the way the floor looks. But like I had mentioned, up until now, we kind of were on a holding pattern. How are we going to finance the rest of it, right? Like, how is there a chance that we have that gap that we know is going to be, you know, $1.5 million? How are we going to come up with that? And we don't know. But the problem is, is to continue to hold off really puts us back. You know, we wanted to open in October. Now we spent two months in a holding pattern. Now we're looking at like Christmas time, right? If we start now. So yesterday I actually met with my general contractors and my entire team in this building. We talked about things. We went over budget. We looked over things and said like, when do we need this money? When do we need that money? So on and so forth. There's going to be exhibits obviously that we have to pay for. Like for instance, Shark Tank, that's going to go right up here. That's going to literally be 25 foot across, six foot tall. It's going to sit on a three foot platform. So it's going to be nine foot tall. It's going to be so impressive. I mean, that enclosure alone is a few hundred thousand dollars. Well, to get it even started is like, you got to put 50% down. So you're looking at $150,000 down. It's going to take two to three months to actually fabricate. Then they bring it in and they put it together in here. And right? this is one exhibit, right? So there's lots of things like that. But regardless, guys, I wanted to tell you, and I am excited about it. Yesterday, I said, let's just go. Let's just do it. You know what I mean? How are we going to do it? I don't know. We have months to figure it out. And rather than sitting here and do nothing, I figured, you know what? Let's just roll. I said, start scheduling. Let's start building. So the first thing that we need to do is we have to work on this front facade. To give you an idea, right here, from this right here, all the way to here is the front door, right? Now, Greg Woodstock is actually coming in. The pond guy and Ed, the pond professor, are coming in and building a giant pond. You guys remember when they came? So there's going to be a waterfall here. There's going to be a big old thing right here, a reservoir here, and then all across here. And what it is is that this is the entrance, right, between these two things here, and then this is the exit on this side. So you're actually going to build a bridge where you're going to have to walk over this bridge to get over into the building. Think about the entrance. I mean, how big it is. Entrance, exit over here, absolutely amazing. So the first thing we need to do is get this done, right? So that means that we have to pour cement, we have to frame it out, we've got to do the front facade. All of this is glass. I mean, just tons and tons of glass. So all the glass needs to get done. The pond is actually supposed to get built sometime in, I think, the second week of July. That means that all of this has to be done by the second week of July. The entire front of the building has to be done. Of course, this wall over here comes out. So this wall is just a temporary wall. You just knock out that, that's no big deal. But this wall has to come down here because this is all part of basically where the gift shop is going to be and that's going to actually be part of the aquarium over here so the first step is to get this going which is going to happen probably about two weeks from now we're going to start to see the framing start to happen and then over the next two months this should be completely done and then you're literally going to see the front of the building exactly like it's going to look like from the outside which is going to be amazing then we add the pond that's going to be incredible and then we have a ton of work to do inside <laughs> Are you guys excited as I am? Because I'm super excited! <laughs> I should have done the clap. Gosh dang it, I need keys. Okay. <laughs> to why am I excited? <sighs> the reason I'm so excited today, guys, is one, I have a lot of energy. Why? Because we just found out <laughs> Oh, she's heavy. We just found out that Mr. Bryant is going through with the expansion across the street. I knew that we knew, I knew that we knew, I knew that this was gonna happen because. It, uh -oh. Ow, uh, that was my head. I didn't mean to. Okay. We all had a feeling that the aquarium was gonna happen because when Brian gets something in his head, it's gonna happen. Okay, no matter what happens. And obviously, with everything that's been going on the last couple of months, it has not been the easiest thing. And I know money's. You know, money <laughs> and the banks and all that stuff. We are going through with the expansion, okay? So that means we get a bunch more room. We get a bunch of new animals, bigger places for our animals, like salt and pepper that are getting way too big and they need to go across the street. And then we get the tortoise pen. I am slipping into the splits. <laughs> This is not great. Matilda. You can't break that. As you see, she needs a bigger spot. She's going to get 400 pounds. 400 pounds. And then this snake, as big as Gemma is, she's going to get much larger. 250 pounds. No. And on top of all the new animals and all the new enclosures, I'm so excited to meet all the new people. All the new people that either haven't been to the reptarium yet, are excited for the aquarium, and of course all the new employees and stuff. You guys gotta think that I might not be... <sighs> there is no way that me and Connie could possibly take care of both this side and that side. So we're gonna have to hire new people. That includes for the aquarium side, we need Aquarius, we need marine biologists, we need a couple more reptile keepers. Hired a new general manager that is fantastic. So you guys, if you come in, you'll meet him. Where are you going, Jim? Jeez. Like I said, we just get all the new space and we get to spend more time with the animals that we love. And I'm just so excited. I'm, I'm, I'm over the moon about this. I'm so excited. And I hope you guys are on the same page. I'm just feeding Drogo a little bit here, just seeing if he wants any snacks for the 
today. He did eat a little bit this morning. We heard today that Brian has greenlit the expansion across the street, which I'm super excited for. I always knew that it was gonna continue to happen deep down in my heart. How awesome, because I just started an animal educator position here. Who knows how many more kids we get to reach out to and actually get to love little guys just like Drogo over here and Brillo, my little armadillo that's chilling over there. How cool that we're gonna still get these new animals and add some new mammals to the group too. Gonna keep it a secret. Don't know exactly what we're gonna get 100%, but we have an idea of what could happen. Surprise. And I never really seen if Drogo really enjoys bananas too much, but we're gonna give it a shot. How did you just, wait a second. We need to, hold on, no, no. Don't what? even give, what, how did you peel that? I've never seen somebody do that. You pop the banana <laughs> it, out? It was soft and it just ripped open like that. Okay, well, that just goes to show how picky Drogo can be sometimes. And again, that work consists of MEPs, mechanical electrical plumbing. So basically you have, you know, the roof needs to get done. We need to put all the, what they call HVAC, which is all your, you know, heating and cooling and all that stuff. This is the reptile side here. This needs to be kept like 80, 82 degrees. But as soon as you walk through here, the door that goes into the fish room, the fish rooms need to be kept about 72 degrees. The other thing is, is you have tons of humidity coming from the fish here. So the HVAC has to be really good at dehumidifying as well. So we want humidity hot here we want lack of humidity and much cooler on this side so there's a lot to do there obviously plumbing tons of trenching because not only do we need more sinks and drains for the animals animal husbandry and stuff like that but we also need to trench for filtration basically a lot of these filters are going to be in like one area what they would call back of the house and basically you're going to have to run plumbing underground some you can run overground too but you know we're going to have a lot of trenching where we're going to have saw a big punch you know pull out dirt lay down pipe and then fill it back over and then cement it once that's done we can grind down the floor and actually start to work on the floor. We have to paint the ceiling. We have to do all the electrical and then we can start putting walls and exhibits up. It goes pretty quick, but that's a lot. You know, the goal is seven months from today. I hope that we open up seven, seven and a half months top. Like I said, I want to be open for Christmas no matter what. Really the beginning of December is my goal, but you know, there's a lot to do and a lot of things have to happen and there can't be very many mishaps that happen because boy, I tell you what, we slow this process down by a month or two. It's going to really, really set us back. Let's hope everything goes smoothly and when it comes to financing, I'm just hoping that somehow in the next seven months, we're gonna find the money we need to finish this project. Hi, Beetlejuice. I have one of my favorite miners here, Beetlejuice, right? And we were only able to get Beetlejuice because we have this suit. I can't even imagine all the animals that I don't even know about that we'll be able to work with in the future just because of our expansion. You know, before we had the zoo, I never even knew what a Bell's Face Lace Monitor was. And now I get to interact with him. He's one of my favorite animals here. So I'm so excited to hear the good news that we're continuing, which I was very hopeful for the entire time. I used to love this guy but now he's being a scaredy cat and running away from me what i was saying is i'm excited because i don't know what animal i'm going to fall in love with next but i guess we'll see so <laughs> oh, <laughs> that feels real nice Everyone thinks I'm crazy when they see my arms, by the way. We just found out that Brian is okayed the continuation of the expansion next door, which I can speak for everybody and say that that's super exciting. Just thinking about what kind of animals we're gonna get in there. Excited for like this whole new opportunity. A lot of space, especially working with Mike, he farts a lot. Like just to have a way to get away from that. The new equipment we can get. Me and Mike, we're always using the Pondo vac or the wet vac or hoses and we're having to drag them through these like tight areas. But this is kind of an opportunity to learn from when we did the build here, expand off of that and make improvements. And so everything should be a little bit more fluid over there. Very excited for that because that basically means that we have to work a little bit less harder and get probably way more done. So obviously the whole vision of the Reptarium started years ago, five years ago, and we opened up and then obviously went to 2.0 almost three years ago. Things have been so amazing the period of time. And then of course the aquarium is something that is like next level. I mean, it's just like the legacy aquarium. I mean, you know, it is my legacy and I'm just so happy that now we're gonna go forward with it. Listen, lots of challenges, guys. It's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna be a lot of energy. I hope I'm up to it. I don't know what the future holds, but we're building a team that can actually do a bunch of stuff, but it's gonna be so cool, and I can't wait to show you guys the process. So I just wanted to share the good news that we are moving forward, putting in God's hands when it comes to figuring out how to pay for everything. It's gonna have to work out, and it's gonna have to be okay. In the meantime, we're gonna make this dream a reality. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, 400 pounds. I'll see you in the next one.